In this episode, we're going to cover a topic about Rudensil, Procapil, and Capixel, and how it can be used and what its role uh, is in the management of hair loss. So stick around. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. All right, so one of the questions that we commonly get on the channel is, can you talk about uh, Redensil, uh, Procapil, and Capixel? And they're, they're compounds that are uh, generally uh, used uh, together. And we've been asked that question for quite a while now, and I've always hesitated in actually doing this video because I'm going to start on a topic that I really don't have a lot of experience in. Uh, but I... I've done a fair amount of research on the topic, so I'll give you what little information that I have. Um, it's, uh, I haven't had any uh, patients that have used it. I've not seen uh, the outcomes uh, from it. Uh, and the availability of these compounds is very dependent on where you, where you live in the world as well. So let's quickly sort of go through it. Uh, and understand uh, a little bit more about it. So, uh, Redensil is basically, it, it's a botanical uh, substance. It's uh, dihydroquercetin and epigallocatechin. Uh, and basically what uh, these compounds do is that they stimulate um, fibroblasts in the, in the outer root sheet. Uh, sheath and therefore stimulate uh, the hair to grow. And it's usually combined with another uh, compound called Procapil, which is also plant derived uh, from oleanic acid, which comes from uh, olives. And what this is uh, support, uh, purportedly meant to do is it inhibits uh, the 5 alpha reductase enzyme, both type 1 and type 2. So, uh, working in a similar way to you know, finasteride and/or dutasteride as well. And the third compound that usually comes with it is something called uh, Capixel, which is a biomimetic peptide. And what this does is it, it increases hair width and, and density. So these are what you'd say is na naturally occurring compounds and usually you take them in combination with each other. So the three compounds together. Um, so to come back to how effective it is, again, I've not seen in large, uh, in large cohorts uh, the, the use of this, and therefore I can't really speak to authentically how effective it actually is. I've seen one study uh, where it comp uh, compared the use of this um, combination, they call it R RPC, with 5% minoxidil. And uh, they studied 124 patients, I believe, and uh, they, uh, there was a choice, uh, you know, they assigned either the RCP or the 5% minoxidil. And then they gave the patient a questionnaire at the, uh, and they did that for 12 weeks. And they gave the patients questionnaires to, uh, you know, how they felt about their hair, and they would mark them out of 10. And also they had uh, assessors come in and also uh, uh, qualitatively try and uh, assess how uh, the hair loss was progressing or certainly improving over the period of 12 weeks. And what they found was that there was a significant uh, improvement in the group that were, had um, the RPC in comparison to the 5% minoxidil. Uh, I'm being very vague because the results were also generally equally vague as well. But uh, certainly from a patient's perspective, all their self-reporting showed that they, uh, the group that were on the R RPC were generally uh, felt that they had a greater, deal, uh, a greater deal of improvement in their hair density and thickness compared to the group that was just on the 5% minoxidil. So this is only one t uh, study. It's not something that has been studied extensively, and I, I uh, and whether and it will be, or uh, or there are future studies that are currently being done. Um, I'm really not sure, but certainly something that uh, people may want to consider and trial and see how effective it is. I think at the end of the day, like with most things, the proof is in the pudding. And if you find that it's effective, then uh, certainly try that. But I hope that sort of unpacks a little bit uh, about what this particular 
compound is. Again, it's not available everywhere. You have to check in uh, in the country that you live in how you can uh, get that if you want to get that and make that up. Um, but uh, that's basically a summary on Redensil, Procapil, and Capixel. I hope you found that useful. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please keep the questions coming, and we'll see you again on the next episode. Take care.